are currently driving through Carmarthenshire, which is where Ian's Welsh ancestors are from. I know from all the family history research I've done on his ancestral lines through Wales. It's a pretty area, though in typical British motorway fashion, all I can really see is lovely green trees and some occasional glimpses of rolling green hills beyond. Pembrokeshire is known as Little England Beyond Wales. While further north in Wales, the Welsh language is widely spoken. Here along the Pembrokeshire coast, the English language and many English cultural traditions are more dominant. In this video, I'm going to show you three places we visited during our stay in this historic and beautiful county. All three of these locations really captured my heart, but I'm betting most of my viewers aren't familiar with all of these places. Please let me know which of them you have visited or which you want to visit after I show you a peek at how amazing they are. We'll start in a small village with a stunningly picturesque castle and mill then stop by the most unique chapel I think I've ever seen, and finish with a visit to a little village with a big castle. You are seeing a preview of that now. Please join me for a tour of some hidden gems of Pembrokeshire, and please click that like button and subscribe button if you haven't already. Cheers! We have arrived in Pembrokeshire at our Airbnb, which I'm going to show you, and it's really nice around here. So we're excited to be here, even though we did recently binge watch the series Pembrokeshire Murders, which was a great program. I feel good about being here. I feel like we're not gonna get murdered. So the Airbnb is in a really cool location in Milton. And, and here is our little room with our TV and storage and the bed and a chair with Mr. Magenta Otter Travels in it and our little coffee area and our little shower room. So great location and we're looking forward to having a nice few days here. Across the street is a estuary and then but far away on the horizon is a castle, which we're gonna need to go investigate. Yeah, it's a beautiful sunny morning. We have some berries and yogurt and herbal teas and a brilliant sunny morning with a view of the water in the estuary that you can't see. <laughs> After our nutritious breakfast, we went off to explore Carew Castle. This is the nearby castle to our Airbnb, less than a mile away. Carew is named after Sir Nicholas de Carew, who built much of this stone castle and lived until 1311. The many bath stone windows and other improvements were alterations made in the 15th and 16th centuries by later owners transforming the edifice from medieval fortress to Elizabethan manor. Here is the famous Carew Cross, which stands in front of the castle. It is an early Christian cross from the 11th century. This puffin sign is just a sad reminder of the cute puffins we did not see on our ill-fated Scomer Island tour while here in Pembrokeshire. I love imagining what a grand castle like this would have looked like back in the day. You can tell by the huge windows and the coats of arms that it was a very magnificent building at one time. This mill here at Carew Castle is special because it is the only tidal mill still in existence here in Wales. And while it's not a working mill, it does still have all the mill equipment inside that you can see in the museum. The Causeway Dam creates a 23-acre mill pond next to the castle, which is so picturesque. Sluice gates now are used to control the tidal water flow, which is no longer used to power the mill. I think the dam has sprung a few leaks. 
I had to stop by and check out what this family was up to, catching crabs with bacon in this crab bucket. I first learned about this type of crabbing in our trip to Dartmouth and South Devon. That's a lovely vlog, which I'll link in the description if you haven't checked it out yet. Look at all the windows on this side of the castle. I didn't have the opportunity to go inside and visit the castle, but I'm just imagining the towers on the outside were the fortification part, and then those giant windows. I'm thinking those have to be more modern, and that's more the magnificent part, because that can't be very secure. But imagine what it looked like back in the day. The circular path that allows you to walk all the way around the castle, across the lake, over the bridge, by the mill, and back is so pleasant. I kind of wanted to move there and make this my daily morning walk. Honestly, it was quite beautiful at sunset when we took an evening walk as well. Take a look at these birds perched atop the posts in the water. They are like me, sitting there enjoying the view of this magnificent castle during the golden hour. We went to the local chippy to grab dinner and saw this cool milk dispenser and milkshake machine. I thought the biscuit flavoring sounded a bit odd though, to be honest. I will be eating chips for the second time today. Well, actually, I guess lunch was fries. So that's, how's that for variety? Fries for lunch and chips for supper. Here is our fish and chips and gravy and curry sauce and ketchup. I'm feeling a bit sluggish today. Good morning. It is our final day in Wales. And before we head back to Cheltenham, we are hoping to see a couple more castles, maybe one really special church, and maybe eat some seafood. Let's see how it goes. This is a really steep, rugged cliffside. Not the normal place you would think of a church being. All right, I'm walking into this chapel and it looks a bit dark in here. Ah. Wow, this is so cool. It's literally a chapel carved into the rock in the side of a cliff on the Welsh coast. Wow, this would be an amazing view to have from the chapel where you are worshiping. So we're here in St. Govan's Chapel and apparently back in the 5th and 6th centuries, it was not unusual for missionaries to come down here to the coastline and basically be a hermit living on the side of a cliff. But then along came some pirates. And they stole the bell from the chapel. Oh my goodness. So yeah, so St. Govan died in, I think, 586. But there has been this chapel here since the 1200s. The 1200s, but it's possibly been a place of worship even earlier than that, as early as the 6th century. It is a very beautiful and peaceful place. Well, right now it is anyway, because there's no pirates attacking me. There are so many caves, clefts in the rock little hidey hole places here.
was just saying that this is the best name for a home in Wales. And then look at what they have. This really cool dragon resting outside their front gate. People have been settled here in the area currently known as Manor Beer since at least 3000 BC. The Normans began building castles here in the 12th century. Manor Beer Castle is unique for a few reasons. For one thing, it towers over a lovely beach along the Pembrokeshire coast. Another wonderful thing about Manor Beer is that it was never attacked by the Welsh princes, which is why it's so well preserved today. The nearby Church of St. James, also from the 1100s, is one of the best preserved churches in Pembrokeshire. Manor Beer's most famous son is Gerald of Wales, who was born here in the castle in 1146. He became a medieval commentator whose works have documented important historical knowledge about the early Middle Ages here in Wales. Gerald once described his home as the pleasantest spot in Wales. He certainly was a bit biased, but it is a lovely place. enjoyed the visit to what I think are some of the best kept secrets in Wales. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today. <laughs>